So Xiaomi has just launched two fresh new premium style smartwatches, the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the Xiaomi Watch S1 Active. I've been rocking both of them on my wrists and somehow still haven't been mugged. And I'm a short skinny wee wuss as well, easy pickings. Not that I'm saying, you know, if you see me on the street, come up and take all of my possessions, please. But anyway, here's my full Xiaomi Watch S1 review and a bit of a side-by-side -side with that Active model to see exactly what the difference is. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Is. Now, one of the major differences between these two smartwatches is very simply the design. The S1 Active is noticeably lighter at just 36 grams versus the regular S1, which weighs a rather hefty 52 grams. And that's because while the standard Xiaomi S1 watch sports a premium stainless steel case, the Active replaces this with a lightweight metal frame. But it still seems pretty damn durable, as you would expect from a proper sporty smartwatch. There's no scratches or chips or markings anywhere on that case, and despite the fact I have been treating it rather rough, you've actually got a choice of three different colours as well. You've got this lovely white model, which is actually quite rare for smartwatches these days. You can also pick it up in blue or a more traditional black. Personally, I prefer the very slick, smart design here on the standard Xiaomi Watch S1, though it's definitely got a kind of a night out on town kind of vibe, but it doesn't look out of place, just, you know, on your wrist all day long, basically. It's a design quite reminiscent of the most premium Huawei and Samsung watches, and yeah, definitely very much a fan. And again, as you would kind of hope and expect, absolutely no scratches, scuffs, or other markings anywhere on that stainless steel case, despite a fair bit of rough treatment. And here on the regular Xiaomi Watch S1, that screen is completely flush with the surface. There's no sticky out bezel action or anything, but thankfully it is constructed from sapphire glass as well, so super tough, which is good to help prevent scratching. So again, no marks or scuffs or anything, despite the fact that this thing has been banged off walls and kitchen counters and all kinds of stuff. Here on the S1 Active, you don't get the same sapphire glass finish, but it does seem pretty damn tough all of the same. Again, still no scratches or scuffs, despite the fact I have treated it pretty awfully, to be fair. That's helped by the fact that you do have bezels that do just slightly above the surface of the display, just to add a bit of extra protection there as well. You do have some text printed onto the bezels here on the S1 Active, whereas the standard Xiaomi Watch S1, it's much more simple traditional finish with just the time markings. And even the dual button setup here on the right edge of the smartwatches, you've got your more traditional sort of dial type finish here on the S1, whereas the S1 Active sports a flatter button. But in case you were wondering here on the S1, even though those dials do rotate, they don't actually actually do anything to any of the menus, so uh, you're still using that touchscreen to scroll up and down. And both of these Xiaomi smartwatches sport your standard 22mm removable straps as well, so you can swap them out and replace them with something else. Here on the S1 Active, it is your typical silicon finish, which is really nice and comfortable against your skin, even when you're wearing it constantly. Here on the regular S1, you've got a leather band by default, which again adds to that sort of premium design. And again, you've got a choice of colors with both the straps, actually. You've got blue, black, or brown here on the leather option on the standard S1. A variety of uh, colors here on the S1 Active, otherwise you can just stick your own on. Now, to actually pair up these watches with your smartphone of choice, you'll have to search for the Xiaomi Watch app, either in the App Store or on the Google Play Store. In the Play Store, it's actually listed as Mi Fitness. And yet, when it's downloaded, it starts calling itself Xiaomi Wear. So, yeah, go figure. And I've got to say, Xiaomi's done a really good job with this app. All of the information you could possibly require is right there, neatly presented with a lovely professional vibe. I also like how my avatar has gorgeous Astro Boy style hair. I'm definitely uh, up for that. There are quite so many beer stains down the front of his shirt. Pairing up, super simple. Just go to the profile section, tap devices, and basically you can just add another device there. It takes literally seconds. You can only pair up with the one watch at at any one time, so I've been concentrating mostly on the standard Xiaomi Watch S1 for this review. And within the app, you can basically tinker around with all of the major settings. So for instance, you can set up exactly which apps will ping your watch and give you a notification. You can tell your watch exactly how often you want the likes of your heart rate uh, monitored and your blood oxygen levels. Knock off those bloody idle alerts, because frankly, bollocks to them. I mean, pretty much, if you hope that something on your watch is customizable, chances are it actually is. Uh, so for instance, even the app layout, you can have it as a grid or a list. And then if you dive into the status section, this is where all of your fitness data basically is synced up with your smartphone. So you can see precisely how active you've been or how slovenly in my case. Check out the old stress levels. Mine always seem to peak around the time when I have to get my daughter ready for school. And got to say, no issues whatsoever with the connectivity either. The watch and the phone stayed paired up absolutely perfectly 
throughout uh, once of course I'd locked the app in and set all the permissions and everything. So now let's turn our attention to these gorgeous displays and it is an identical 1.43 inch AMOLED screen on both the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the S1 Active. Got the same 326 pixel per inch resolution, so nice crisp visuals, tiny text comes through nice and legible. Wide view and angles, so you can surreptitiously tell the time with just a casual glance at your wrist without making it too obvious. And pleasingly punchy, vibrant in your face colors, as you can see right there as well. Now, if you jump on into the display settings, you will see you do actually have auto brightness on both of these watches as well, which I'd highly recommend ticking because then it can boost the brightness when you're out and about and then lower it right down again when you're indoors just to help preserve the battery life a bit. You got five levels of brightness and on that maxed out brightness level, 450 nits of power. So you can clearly see what is going on even on a sunshiny day. I did actually test out these watches in Barcelona where the sun does occasionally shine, unlike the grey drizzly UK. And one of the benefits of an AMOLED screen is you do get an always on display option on there as well. Very handy indeed if you don't want to be constantly waking up your smartwatch just to check what the bloody time is. And that can also be scheduled as well so it knocks off at night. You've got a handful of watch faces pre-installed on both the watch S1 and the S1 Active. They're basically identical. You've got a good mix of analog and digital efforts, uh, some sporty type affairs with all of your health stats right there on the main screen. I do really like how you've got the same sort of living wallpaper as you get on those Xiaomi smartwatches as well, which really come to life when you wake your watch up. Got to say though, with this one active, it does tend to kill the battery life a bit quicker, so I tend to, uh, to avoid it, unfortunately. And if you do find yourself getting bored of those pre-installed watch faces as well, never fear. Just dive back into the Xiaomi Wear app and you'll find watch faces there in the profile section. It shows you all the faces you've got installed on the watch. You can also jump to the online section and get some more downloaded. You've got over 200 to choose from. Again, a great variety between analog and digital. Some very arty farty stylistic options. And the watch faces are actually arranged into different categories to make life a little bit easier if you're looking for a specific sort of vibe. And if you're not really a fan of any of those, you can actually create your own watch face using any photo on your phone. Either analog or digital, let's go for an analog effort. But you can actually create a bit of a slideshow using up to eight different images. And it's very simple stuff, just scale the image and drag it to where you need it. Then once you've got all the images you want, you can also choose the style. So basically what widget you want to appear at the bottom there be it a steps counter, the weather, battery life, and then finally hit apply and that will get uploaded. And thankfully the syncing process is super, super quick. And then there she blows a different persona based watch face every time I wake up my watch. Now the actual watch UI, again, feels pretty streamlined, nice and slick, easy access to all of the main features. And again, quite similar if you're used to Wear OS and Huawei watches and the like. The main difference is that you'll actually be swiping up the screen in order to access your settings menu and swiping down the screen to access your notifications, which is kind of backwards uh, compared with Wear OS and basically every other smartwatch. So it took me several days to actually get used to this arrangement. Not sure why Xiaomi has done it this way, but again, you've got access to all of your sort of main settings right here on the smartwatch watch as well as your main toggles so for instance uh, the do not disturb night mode you turn your watch into a torch which is very handy when you need a piss in the middle of the night and then if you swipe left and right you will access your widget pages and you can fully customize these within the mobile app to set them up exactly how you want them i've got mine set up so the first page is fitness widgets like heart rate stress levels general stats the next page you've got battery weather and your media controls. Yeah, jump on into that Xiaomi Wear app and this is fully customizable so you can change orders, you can completely get rid of some of the widgets if you want just by dragging them down to the bottom here. And at any point you can add a new page of widgets if you want and you've got a good little selection here, a variety of sort of mostly health related stuff but some other bits as well including timers, stopwatches, and of course you've got your small widgets and your big widgets. And I just really love how you can fit multiple widgets onto a single page so you're not flicking over and over and over again to get to the bits that you want. Now as for those two physical buttons, well the top button is used to wake up the watch and also to access your apps menu either as a grid or a list. Got lots of stuff packed on here by default including all your stuff you would expect, all the health related shenanigans, you've got your media controls, again stopwatches, timers, Check out the pressure levels if you happen to be uh, doing a bit of mountain climbing. You've got a find my phone feature if you happen to mislay that. And you've also got a camera shutter button feature. So you can use your watch to take photos with your phone remotely. 
Well, that's another keeper. As for the bottom button, well, you can customize this to basically load up any app that you like, though by default it is set to the exercise tracker in. Now, both of these Xiaomi smartwatches boast a built-in speaker and a microphone as well, so you can actually take calls via the watch if you happen to have left your phone somewhere and you're like, oh, somebody's ringing. This is best not used on a busy high street or some other crowded area, however, because A, you'll look like a bit of a prick answering your call on your smartwatch, and B, the mic quality isn't fantastic, so it'll be picking up everything else going on around you and likewise as far as the speaker goes it's a tiny little smartwatch speaker so you'll be sort of pressing your arm up against your ear trying to hear what's going on both the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the S1 Active will also offer Amazon Alexa voice assistant support, although unfortunately at the time I was testing and reviewing these smartwatches, i.e. before the official UK launch, this feature didn't seem to have actually been set up. There was no way of activating it via the mobile app. Likewise, I didn't have a chance to test out the mobile payments as well. Both of these smartwatches should accept MasterCard, uh, so you can just basically tap and pay and then bugger off right out of there nice and easy but again unfortunately so far in the UK that doesn't seem to be set up via the mobile app so I'll try and test that once the launch has happened and these features have been integrated. Now if you are a massive fitness fan you do a lot of uh, pound on the pavement lots of trips down the gym all that sort of stuff well you don't have to get the S1 active you can just get the standard Xiaomi watch S1 because this boasts the exact same fitness features. You've got your 24-7 heart rate monitoring using a PPG sensor, 24-7 SPO2 as well. You've also got tracking for 117 different kinds of exercise. Uh, this is just a small selection of the fitness modes on here right now. You can add and remove them either via the watch or via the mobile app. And this covers pretty much anything I could possibly think human beings would do to stay fit. I mean, you've even got stuff on here like stretching, which I just thought was like a warm-up. If you can just get away with doing a warm-up every day, then job done. Wall bowl. No idea what that is, but that sounds fun. Like, they even have bobsleigh, so yeah, job done. And the Xiaomi Watch S1 and that S1 Active can also auto-detect when you are just having a bit of a stroll out and about as well. It just gives you a little ping saying, hey, I've detected you're walking. Do you want to track this? And I found that that's generally a pretty reliable feature. You've got dual band multi-system GPS built in, GLONASS, Galileo, BDS, QZSS, all that good stuff. And I found the location tracking was impressively accurate when you're out and about walking, running, whatever you're doing. You can check back your routes via the mobile app, as well as checking out all of your stats, such as your cadence, uh, kilometer by kilometer breakdowns when you're hiking or jogging, including elevation changes, all kinds of stuff. Now let's finish up this review of the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the S1 Active with a squint at the battery life and both of these small watches sport a 470 milliamp battery. The Xiaomi reckons you'll get around 12 days of use with typical usage but I found that certainly if you've got all of the features active including that always on display, the 24-7 heart rate and SPO2 track and all that good stuff, you're actually going to get more like 4-5 to five days of use from a full charge. And to be perfectly honest, that's a very respectable result indeed because basically Wear OS watches tend to die within a day or two. You know, the Samsung Galaxy watches, generally you'll get two days out of those if you're lucky. So the Xiaomi watch is more comparable to the Huawei watches. You'll tend to get, you know, the best part of a week out of a single charge, which is great. And obviously, if you're going away for a long weekend or something, it means you don't have to worry about packing the charger. Speaking of which, the Xiaomi Watch S1 actually supports wireless charging, and you do get a wireless charging dock bundled there in the box as well, just in case you don't have a smartphone with reverse wireless charging, for instance. And it's got a Type C port on it as well, so nice and easy. You don't need to take any other cables with you, just take your smartphone charger with you, bung that on there, job done. Unfortunately, the Xiaomi Watch S1 Active does not support wireless charging. You've got a more traditional smartwatch dock right here with the connecting pins, as you can see there. And it's got the attached cable and everything as well. So you will need to remember to take that away with you if you are going on any long trips. And that right there in a nutshell is the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the S1 Active. And I've got to say, I am definitely a fan. At least you've got an option, whether you're a more sporty type, you prefer this sort of design, or whether you just want a really nice, slick, premium looking smartwatch to rival the likes of the Samsungs and the Huawei's. The UI is very slick and fully featured. I'm just hoping that that Alexa and the MasterCards tap and pay support comes in really soon. But certainly if you want a fully featured smartwatch with strong battery life, then give it a go. So yeah, that is the Xiaomi Watch S1 and the S1 Active. Definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pause, subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. I've just covered the fresh new Xiaomi 12 series smartphones right here as well. So check those out and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.